Hi there everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back to this DIY Mom Life. You guys, I have so much to share with you this week. Um, if you've been following for a while, I have been doing these kind of sit down episodes about once a month, kind of catching you up on the things I've been working on. However, um, I have a ton right now. I wasn't going to um, record this quite so soon. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Thanks for checking it out. Um, but I am currently past my due date for pregnancy and I kind of thought that this episode would be kind of pushed into um, after the baby was born. However, really these last few weeks I feel like my energy has kind of slowed or I've been using up my energy doing things faster so I've been having more sitting time and I have been knitting like crazy. I've also been having a lot of like sleepless nights where I can't sleep might as well kind of sit up and knit a little bit anyways um, and somehow through it all I have a lot to share with you. So I hope you'll stick around and take a look at what I have been working on. I'm gonna apologize right now if I'm a little bit out of breath kind of the the state of the game right now. Nothing I can do about it. Um, but anyways, bear with me, please. So the first thing I want to show you is the sweater I am wearing right now. And this is called the My Everything Cardigan, My Everything Sweater by Hohi Locatelli. This sweater has a huge um, collar on it. It's basically a giant circle that goes all the way around. I'll try to put in a flat shot here because I don't think you'll get the full picture. Um, and it has this twisted cable all the way around the neck and then also down the back. I will just pop it off for a sec to show you. So you can see it's just a huge amount of collar and kind of looking back I do wish it was a little there was a little less fabric that goes behind your head. It kind of becomes almost like pillow like um, but still it's really fun. It was really fun to knit. It has this cable going up the back and really really interesting and unique construction to make this sweater. It was super fun. Really fun knit. And because the construction is so unique, uh, or that's why I'm blaming it on this, I ended up actually attaching my second sleeve upside down, which I was so frustrated about. I, on this sweater, you kind of knit this top part and then you knit in a big circle all the way around. And then when you go to pick up for your sleeves, you basically have a loop to pick up for and you knit the sleeve cap going down to the sleeve. So I had done that on the first one, but somehow when I picked up for the second one, I put my sleeve cap at the bottom and I'll put in a picture here too. And it went straight up and I didn't realize until the sleeve was almost done. Um, and yeah, I had to put it down for, for a little bit, um, a day or two, if that, I guess. I was just, I was ready to fix it by the end. Also, one thing to note is this sweater. I knit it out of Holst Garn, which is a Danish company of yarn. This is their Tides line, which is 70% wool and 30% silk. We can see it there very well. And it is in the seagull color. This is a fingering weight yarn, so I held it double throughout the whole sweater. And it's a yarn that's known to have a lot of spinning oil on it. That's kind of common for all the Holst Garn yarns um and you wouldn't believe how much it bloomed when it blocked i remember talking about this last month when i was knitting that i was a little worried about how the fabric was looking however i had made a gauge swatch swatch and i blocked it and it really filled out and i'm so happy that it did um you can see it doesn't quite look like your typical merino it's definitely coarser and you could i could definitely tell when knitting it it had the plant fiber feel like from the uh, from the silk mixed with the wool. It didn't have the bounce of wool. It felt more like knitting with a linen or a cotton. And I didn't mind it until basically the end. And then I could feel how much I wanted to get back to the bouncy feel of the merino. And I picked up another project just to kind of give me a little back and forth because I found it a little bit hard on the hands. Um, and this sweater has a lot of knitting in it. <laughs> like that collar really adds a lot. Um, and again, I didn't really mind it until probably the end of the collar to the sleeves. That's when I started feeling it. I could feel it like on the thing on my finger where the yarn sits, it kind of cutting in. And anyways, it was fine. I just, um, I probably wouldn't choose the wool silk blend again for such a large project unless I had something really specific in mind. Um, I do think it's going to work great. It feels good. It'll be a really, you know, useful sweater and everything. However, um, moving forward, I'm going to stick to more of the wool, 
more higher wool content. So with the whole scarn, it is, let me see here, um, 314 yards or 287 meters per 50 gram cake or a little ball like this. And I ordered 12 of these, again, holding it double. And this is all I have left, which is definitely less than one full cake. Um, and by the end, I was just using like from the outside and the inside, um, pulling from the same one. So I think I was really bang on with the yardage for this sweater. Um, and Holskarn is a fairly affordable yarn and I just pulled it up here. And so those 12 balls cost me $31, um, which for the wool silk isn't bad. Um, and they have super, their Holst Super Soft, which is kind of their more common line. And you'll see I'm knitting with that in a separate project. It is a little bit less expensive um, and holding it single rather than double really makes that sweater more affordable yet. Each ball is in the two to three dollar range. And so um, for my other sweater, I ordered six balls. I'll show you that. And I'm really interested to see how much it will use because again, it's such a good affordable option um, for making sweaters. So I mentioned wanting to kind of switch off with this sweater for something else. And I had picked up the yarn when I had ordered from Knit Picks for my Citadel sweater, which I finished about a month ago, some um, Wool of the Andes Super Wash. And I had said that I was planning to make the May sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I was going to hold off on making it because it is pullover style. It is oversized and kind of a large v-neck, but again, end of pregnancy, I just thought this isn't going to work out well. However, I kept going back to that yarn and kind of squishing it and just wanting to knit with it. Um, it is this one here, Superwash in the Fjord Heather, and it is quite a bit softer than the non-Superwash, which is what I knit my Citadel sweater out of. So I really just decided, whatever, I'm gonna jump into it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make the large. I read through a ton of project pages. Some people found it was too oversized. Some people found they wish they would have made a larger size, which kind of makes it hard. I'm usually falling between large and extra large. Obviously right now, my size is all over the place, um, but I want it to fit longer than just in the next couple months. And with the Citadel, which I just finished, I had gone for the extra large and wishing I had gone down a size. Again, different designer it's not like it's really that straightforward however I decided to make the large and see what happened again with superwash too since it does stretch a lot of the issues were that it started stretching down and um, it just it the fit wasn't quite right so I thought by going down a size it would work out and yeah I, I started it and finished it here and this is my May top. It is short sleeves, kind of this drop shoulder. It has a really deep V in the front and the back, which I think will be really nice for wearing just with like probably a nursing tank top underneath. And then it also has a high low hem at the bottom, right like that. There's a texture stitch throughout. And then it also has the kind of faux seam down the center. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. And then also on the sides, there's that slipped detail right on the seam. And this one I also had an issue with. I don't know if I'm just not paying as close of attention or I'm just kind of zooming along. Not, I don't know what the issue is, but in the end, I you knit this bottom up and then you end up seaming the top and there's this faux seam detail right on the shoulder. And when I, you knit each quadrant, each panel, like the front piece, and somehow I had seamed it like, like this sideways so that the shoulder seams were backwards and the armhole was at the front and the v-neck was at the side. Um, you really couldn't tell all that much and that's partially because you start them all at the same point. However, the high-low hem is what gave it away for me um, and that was really the first time that I even tried it on. Um, again, nothing's really fitting. I didn't really know if it would be all that helpful but I thought, oh, I'll just stick it on, see what happens and that's what I noticed. So I'm glad I did um, and I was able to rip out those seams and reseam them and they look so much better now. I'm really glad I made the change. 
And yeah, I think this will be really wearable. The v-neck looks really big, but when I tried it on, it's not crazy, and I think that'll be good. Um, again, I'm glad I made the large, not the extra large, because with blocking and superwash, it does stretch down. And um, yeah, I think it will be a really wearable piece for me. I'm really looking forward to being in a better state to wear it. <laughs> And yeah, it felt like maybe it wasn't the best time to cast it on. However, I had so much fun knitting it and that's what I'm all about right now is enjoying the process. And um, yeah, it was really fun. So with the knit picks, I had ordered, this was at the same time when I had topped up my Citadel order, I'd ordered 10 balls, which I knew was more than I needed. And I have three and a half, more than a half left. So I know that this will be fine because first of all, not only do I love the color, um, this is more than enough for a child size sweater and I'm knitting a lot of those these days too. So really with those leftovers, I have enough to do something. It's not like I just have a one extra ball and it's gonna sit and languish for a while. And again, I really love the color, so I'm sure it will go to use. So with that, I used seven full balls and broke into the seventh just a bit. And the Wool of the Andy Superwash is 110 yard, yards per 50 gram ball. Um, so that's how much yardage I used for the size large here. All right, we are not even close to getting done our finished objects, although two garments is um, definitely more than I have knit in this time span before. Um, anyways, moving on though, I wanted to make a few more smaller size things, a few baby things, I guess, and it has been just so fun using up little scraps, little odds and ends to make these little projects. I'm in a really good break from the garment knitting that require like so much of the same over and over. So the first little guy I made was this little bunny here. It's called the Zip Zip Bunny. This is a pattern by Alif Tecton by uh, Zip Zip Dreams is her company. She has a ton of very cute little um, stuffy patterns and things. He's crochet and it's just a free pattern on Ravelry. Her face is so cute. I wish my face would have turned out a little better, but otherwise he's got a little tail on the back. And I just used a little scrap. This is from Red Heart and I had, um, what is it, their boutique line, something like that. It's a fairly low, like a, a really loose plied yarn, loose spun. Maybe it's even a single, I'm not even sure. I don't have the ball band anymore. I'd made a hat or something out of it and this is what was left. So I just made this little guy up. I, we have made, I have made quite a few um, plush animals, things like that for the kids. But with the last couple of kids, I have really liked taking like a weekly picture to show the baby growing. And I had made, um, at least for the last one, a little stuffed animal for those weekly pictures. So I thought I would make something new um, for those pictures coming up that I will be taking. So this is the one I ended up with. For the baby, I also used the leftover yarn from my, the Bernat Velvet. I had made a video about it before and made a bear. And uh, this is just a very simple crochet blanket. It is so soft. Again, it was a good alternating project from something like this that it was a little tighter on the hands. Um, and it's not very big, a very loose gauge. <clears throat> I just kind of made it up. I think I did a row of trebles and a row of single crochet. And I'm gonna just use this as a car seat blanket, something to tuck around the baby. It is end of March. However, uh, we still have snow and we still need warm things here. And I thought that since it is so soft, it would be really nice to kind of tuck into the car seat. I also modified a blanket I had made for my firstborn that was crocheted. I'll actually grab it here. <clears throat> I don't remember what the yarn is. I made this, like I said, like five years ago, but all I did was add some little ties. I actually had a little scrap of this yarn left. It's a simple scallop pattern on here. And all it did was make it into a car seat blanket. So it will hook on and then it's easy to flap it back or pull it forward. Um, and really just because I didn't keep, um, like we had moved and I had passed on the car seat cover I had used before. Um, and since it's not the dead of winter, I decided not to go for the heavy duty um, shower cap style. I think this will be sufficient for this time of year. However, all it took was very simple, 
little uh, straps made with chains and single crochets um, to turn it into a car seat blanket that I think will work really well. So once again, I decided to use some scraps I had to make another baby garment. And this is the Newborn Vertebrae Bray Sweater. Um, it's a free pattern in the newborn size, or you can, it's a paid for pattern in the larger sizes. It's like a little cardigan that's open in the front, which is nice for um, babies that like to be, you know, snuggled on your front. Um, and my babies have always liked that a lot. I actually have knit one of these before um, and it's in blue, it's in a blue stripe. This pattern is by Kelly Van Nykirk. And again, I'll link all these patterns and things below if you wanna go check them out. Um, and I knit this out of Knit Picks palette in silver. Now, if you have been here before to see what I've been making, this will not be a new yarn to you. I picked this up last summer and had made myself a gray cardigan out of it. And it was kind of a long-term seam project, the Tempest cardigan. And when I was finished that, I had two balls left. One ball went into my exploration station and the last ball became a newborn vertebrae. And I really like when I'm able to use up all my yarn. And this gray has been so versatile. I really enjoyed it. And with this pattern, I did modify it slightly and put some little cables down the back. I thought that would be cute. Again, they're really kind of small and dainty. <laughs> I think they'll be fine. Won't be like bothersome or anything. And then I also put it down the front, right where the ribbing attaches. Um, and so I think this will be, again, just another cute little outfit, little op sweater option. I like having some hand knits, not just for functional, like if we're going out and want to put that extra layer on in the car seat or whatever, um, but also for newborn pictures. I really am looking forward to taking newborn pictures this time and uh, want to have a few little options. Again, since I have the yarn and the pattern's free and it's just, again, really fun project, no excuses, it's just, it's fun to make things for babies. So after making those things, I ended up breaking into a ball of yarn that I had received through Knit Crate. And I'm fortunate that Knit Crate sends me their box every month to just to kind of try out and to make what I like with it. And this was from last fall. It is a very, very hot pink. It is the... All right, it is from Yuru Yarn by Knit Crate. It's one of theirs. The colorway is Apple and it's their sugared sock base, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% Stellina. And so it's very sparkly. I don't know how well that will read, but it is bright, sparkly. It has a little bit of kind of, um, it's a bit of a semi-solid. And I knew I wanted to knit something for my daughter, um, who is five, and decided that now was the perfect time. So I took a look on Ravelry, didn't really see anything that was exactly what I was looking for, and so just to kind of decided to cast on and make something as I went. So this is the little sweater top I ended up with. It is a little cropped cardigan. Um, I I wanted to make something that would go over some tank top dresses. She really likes dressing up, wearing little, you know, fancy dresses to church or whatever, but we still have a lot of cold weather ahead and I've been telling her it's too cold to just wear tank top dresses and, or, you know, without long sleeves or... Anyways, I thought this would look really nice and she also has a little Easter dress that I think it will match with. Hold it up here. I put a little lace panel on the back. No, the light's not, maybe not the best, but it's sparkly and it's got this lacy stuff going on. It fits her right kind of at her waist. I stuck it on a hanger, thought it might help. Um, and then I let her pick out the buttons and she picked these little flowers. I think a third button would have helped it lay a little bit flatter on her um, or kind of pull in this top part. However, I only had two and she really liked these ones. So I thought we'd make it work and yeah. That is what I ended up with. She's really excited about it. She's been wearing it basically every day over all of her regular clothes. So I think it is a hit. And I do have 30 grams left of this 100 gram ball, which um, I'm holding on to for now. If the baby ends up being a girl, I kind of have an idea. I might make something similar for the baby to wear like as a Easter, kind of similar sort of thing. Easter top, I don't know, something matching. But I'm gonna wait and see on that. 
not going to rush into it and if not 30 grams that's enough to do some heels and toes on another pair of socks or anyways time will tell what that will become all right I took a quick break for coffee and to uh, take that sweater off because I am getting hot <laughs> all right so one more baby item I made was a diaper a cover or soaker here Again, just using up a little scrap of yarn I had, seemed like the right amount. This is yarn by Custom Woolen Mills. It's their mule spinner yarn. And I, what did I make? I think I made a sweater out of this and just had a little piece left. It is non-superwash. It's a fairly rustic kind of wool. I dyed this and um, I think it's going to be perfect for a diaper cover. I modified a pattern that is by the wool diaper cover by Cynthia Combs. It's simple, it's pretty small, like this will be an earlier size, um, but a lot of my covers and things are fairly felted just because they have been through quite a few kids, and so I thought I would make up one. This one, it's a Aran weight yarn, so it's quite thick, and I think it'll be really nice for nights, um, or really anytime. I am a big wool diaper fan. Um, again, I've mentioned that in the past and I like using both the covers and the knitted pants. I actually pulled them out if you wanna. Got a nice little stack here I am looking forward to using that I've made <laughs> over time or that the people have given to me. Uh, my mom and sister have made quite a few of these as well. Um, and yeah. I really like putting babies in the woolies um, for diapering purposes. So I just wanted to make up a quick little soaker um, or diaper cover for this baby as well. All right, so I have some spinning to share, but one of the things I spun, I also knit. So I'm gonna move into that now. And on my last, um, the last time I sat down to update you, I had shown you some spinning I had done and had explained that it was the last of my fiber. However, I had been given a wool um, comforter type blanket. It was really thick, heavy, and it would had been in the family for a long time. Nobody had used it. It was basically at the point of needing to be repurposed and it had a lot of just like, yeah, I don't know, fluffy wool on the inside, unfelted mostly. Um, however, it had been worn, it was again old, like more than 50 years old, I think. So I had been given this blanket and was kind of told maybe you can make something out of it. And I have some hand carters that I was given, or that came with my spinning wheel. They are also very old, not in very good shape. So I had kind of gone through this, tried to pick some of the best pieces. I dyed them, I tried to comb them as well as I could. I rolled them up into kind of a roll egg, although I didn't really know that's what I was doing at the time, and started spinning. Now this, again, was a little while ago, probably, two years ago, shortly after I got my spinning wheel when I was working on it. And I had spun up a couple balls and just hadn't got to plying it. That was kind of when I was going through some transition, starting work, had a bunch of other stuff on my plate and it just kind of sat. It wasn't, like I said, plied together. It was just sitting in singles. And so I rediscovered this in the last couple months and thought I would give it a whirl, put it together, see what I came up with. So I spun up what I had had already plied I didn't work on any new fiber and I had put some pictures on Instagram this is what I have left right now um, but it was more than this and it is very much like lumpy and bumpy and rustic it has lots of these little fluffy bits which I could have pulled out when I was spinning or plying but I thought again knowing where this wool came from it wasn't such a bad thing I mean I knew it would never look like a super fine merino or anything so I went ahead plied that up and then I have been making some mittens with them now this wool was given to me by a family member I don't really have any clue on the origins but I thought I would make mittens for those family members and these are the two pairs that I made and they've got this one here I really like the way that this one has this gradient kind of going on and a second pair here these are have a different kind of cuff this one has definitely some scratch to it this um, the wool that I've been using and so I use some of that custom woolen mills on the cuff because it is quite a bit softer and a little more squishy and I thought maybe it would be more comfortable to have around the wrist I obviously have enough wool. I can make more of these if I want to, but I wanted to start with a couple pairs. Again, I think I'm gonna gift them, um, and we'll see if that becomes this one's future or what happens from here. 
To make these mittens, I just used the Super Bulky Mittens pattern. It's just a free one on Ravelry by Diane Sosi. And um, it's easy to modify. It has options for like a ribbed cuff, a rolled cuff, different things like that. Again, very straightforward, single layer mitten. Um, but I'm really happy and it's so fun to see something that has just been sitting turn into something useful. And now we've got a few new pairs of mittens out of the deal and out of an old wool blanket that was otherwise unused. <laughs> Alright, so moving on, I do have a couple things in progress, a couple are a little bit more spinning to share with you tiny bit of sewing and I think we're gonna wrap things up. So starting into works in progress, after doing those last few garments I have been having so much fun making sweaters and I decided to continue on that train and uh, use some more of the whole Scarn Super Soft and I decided to make the dark water sweater. It is a pattern by Jennifer Steingast. She makes a lot of really beautiful color work sweaters. They're not super complicated, um, but I have seen a lot of really good reviews. I think the Fern and Feather is one of her more popular ones. However, since I had fingering weight, I wanted to stick with that, and I really like this design. It is a newer one. And, okay, I'm gonna have to tell you a little more about the yarn, but I'm gonna show you my project first. <laughs> so this is where it is at so far. You can see it's a fairly graphic print, a little more modern looking. I, again, whole scarn super soft. These are my colors. We have, this is 100% wool, and I have topaz, which is the lighter color work one, and then I think it's, it's mariner is the dark navy here. Like I said, I have six balls of the navy and then just the one of the light color work. Um, of uh, topaz. So I'm interested to see how much I will use. I haven't even made it through the first ball of the mariner or of either of them yet. Um, it's a little bit scrunched up on my needle here and I am using my Jiagu interchangeable needles which I really love and um, I'm knitting this on a size four. Now, when I came to decide on the sizing, this yarn is a fairly light fingering, and I really like the fabric that the four made versus the five, which is the needle size five, which is what the pattern called for. So with that in mind, and also the fact that um, it calls for having some positive ease in the pattern, I did make a size up, and I think it should work out. I haven't tried this on yet. Again, I don't know. I'm going to. I will definitely try it on before I split for the sleeves. Just try to keep in mind changing sizes. A pullover really probably isn't a very great choice for me right now. Looking into a long period of needing nursing friendly shirts or tops coming up in the time ahead. But seriously, after doing all these cardigans, all I want to do is knit stock knit in the round um, and kind of be done with purling for a while. The amount of purling required in this um, My Everything cardigan was pretty intense and so I'm ready for some just plain old knitting in the round. Um, so again, I decided I'm gonna do it. I wanted to knit it for the process and I know I there will be a time I can wear it and hopefully it is not in the far too distant future. Um, however, yeah. That's where that's at. I realize it's not something that will get a lot of use right away necessarily. I am loving this pattern so far. I'm really glad I went ahead with it and I do think it will be great again looking forward into my next month or so. Um, I don't have a ton of color work yet but once or left sorry and but once I split for the sleeves it is really just going to be knitting in the round and I think that's going to be kind of the perfect process or project to have on hand with a new board to kind of pick up and put down. Okay, so back to the yarn. I ordered this yarn in January and it was around the same time that I had put in my order for Knit Picks and I did not realize at that time what my color choices were. Apparently January, when I was ordering yarn, all I was feeling was navy and this light greenish color because if you look at that Knit Picks yarn, I have my navy Citadel sweater I just finished and the Fjord Heather Knit Picks color. 
this was the first amount I ordered and then this is the whole scar. <laughs> so you may notice um, apparently that's what I'm feeling right now um, and it's all right because I have also been knitting with a lot of gray. So throw in some gray whether that be this one which is my last sweater um, or what that may be. It's just these apparently this is my color palette for uh, the end of winter slash spring 2019. I'm fine with it. Oh yeah, this obviously my everything gray sweater as well. I would much rather make clothing in the colors that I like to wear rather than trying to branch out just for the sake of trying something different and then not wear it. Um, so I'm okay with it. It's just kind of funny. When I pulled <laughs> this yarn out and thought, oh, okay, when I had made my order from Holst using these ones and then my Knit Picks order <laughs> using literally the exact same colors. Okay, my only other work in process, progress, process, uh, my brain's turning off at this point, is this pair of socks. I showed it last week, I haven't, or last time, I haven't done a ton of work on it. Um, it's another one from Knit Crate, and I'm just doing a very simple three by one rib on the front. You can see I've got a little stitch marker there, just one that I had made. I put in the heel and um, it's kind of been languishing with everything else. This is another one I kind of thought I wanted to have on hand for newborn days, um, but we'll see how late this baby's going to be, how much of these projects I get done because I'm not going to quit working on them while I'm waiting. I feel like that makes the wait so much more painful, um, but at the same time, I, I'm trying to think ahead, I guess. I'm thinking it's not a great match of using this for part of my cuff because I, again this is using up leftovers. I use this in my Exploration Stations shawl as well and I want to have enough um, for the second foot and then I think I'm just going to do a contrast cuff. Not super sold on this but we will see um, if I come up with something better or not. All right, so after my last episode, when I was talking about being out of fiber, I may have taken a little look on the Legacy Studios website, which is a small um, fiber yarn company out of Cochrane, Alberta. And um, I picked up some Coriadale. And this is something I've kind of, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, but I was having so much fun spinning. I'd used up all of now this, um, the wool comforter, <laughs> fiber that was sitting here and um, seriously I have knit through a ton of my yarn stash in the last couple months which is really exciting it's a good thing to me like it's really fun to see things going down um, and I haven't been purchasing or replacing them anyway so I ordered I was hoping or I am hoping that it is enough for a sweater so I ordered 500 grams I've never really I made one sweater with hand spun but it was kind of an after the fact thing and it was very early in my spinning and I wasn't sure how much to order and I'm not sure that it was enough. However, I picked up these colors and got to spinning right away and I really just like flew through it. Um, I've posted a few pictures over on Instagram and you may be interested to see those. Um, my pictures are a little behind there because I've been trying to take nicer ones with my camera but sometimes I end up a little bit delayed by the time I get them on my phone and post it and everything else. But if you are interested in following along you can always check me out over there. It's the same this DIY mom life. Anyways, I made this yarn in the end all out of that Coriadale. I actually put together a little video or I rather I took the footage it's not all put together yet of me prepping the fiber and spinning it and I hope to get that out to you in the next little while here if you're interested in kind of seeing the full detail. I decided to I wanted it to be have this lavender throughout so I used more lavender than the other colors so on the one ply I used the lavender with a little bit of that of an ice gray color and with the other ply I stuck with the gray so it was like a dark medium and light gray and when they're applied together this is what I ended up with. I am happy with it. I It's a little thicker than I was hoping for but again I'm a fairly new spinner and <laughs> I'm not complaining about that. I knew full well that was likely going to happen and 
I don't didn't do very thorough calculations, but I think I have around 900 meters, which could get me like a cropped sweater. Don't know if I want to go that route, kind of a short sleeve shirt, or I was thinking about pairing it with something. And I do have this dark gray touch of alpaca. I was thinking of putting with it just either could use it with like the gray as an edging and do a cardigan. Cardigan I think I would get the most use out of. Um, but there's something because it's kind of fuzzy and nice here. I was thinking it would be really nice kind of um, in a similar style as like the no frill sweater that everyone's been knitting with mohair it seems like where it's just kind of a pullover loose fit sort of thing. But again, not much yarn. I haven't fully decided. This is recently finished. So I am still thinking through my options for it. Um, but yeah, it is such a nice fiber. I've never used Corydell before. I've heard there's some similarities to Merino, but it's a little bit more medium. Um, and I thought that might be a good thing. I have been um, enjoying using the little bit more woolly wools for my sweaters lately. So I thought it might be a good choice and I haven't swatched yet. That's my next step. I want to make a little swatch, see how it looks knit up and see if that helps me decide how I'm going to knit it. So if you have any good ideas or suggestions, please leave them down below. I'm really interested to hear. Um, I'm sure there's things I haven't even thought of yet. I've been thinking about ways I could incorporate the darker gray with it. And um, I think that could be a nice contrast, but I don't know if I want to go there either. So. Either way, I'm in the deciding phase with that, but that is going to be my next sweater, I guess. I don't have any other sweater quantities of anything. Um, however, I do have some plans to make some kid side sweaters with some of the leftovers from my yarn. So I think that's gonna be really fun and you can expect that coming up. All right, we are getting through what I have to share with you. I thought I would just show, I did pick up when I ordered from Legacy Studios some Falkland top, uh, just 100 grams, just another fiber I wanted to try out. And I have plans to dye this and um, spin it up as well. I'm hoping to take a little video of it, but so far I've been working with this other stuff. So haven't got there yet, but I'm not 100% out of fiber, but I am taking probably a little spinning break um, while I finish up some of these projects for right now. Um, so I do have that coming up. I also made just a quick little newborn top. It just has a little side snap on it and it is this very soft, um, I don't even know exactly what it is. I think it is a French terry fabric. It didn't turn out perfectly, but I think it will be nice with all of these like little knitted pants and things I have as a simple little pull on top. And I used a pattern, just a freebie from Pearl Soho to make this up. And again, the fabric's really soft and I thought if I liked it, I could make more, but honestly I found sewing the stabs on kind of fiddly, so I just stopped at the one. The last thing I have to share with you, no, not the last, I have two things that came in that I wanna share with you. First being my March Knit Crate, and it is the Knitology in, let's see, the Sheen, Knitology Sheen is the base, and the colorway is Titmouse. And it is 75% merino, 15% silk, 10% cashmere fingering weight. So that's what that looks like. And I thought I would also, this is the little booklet that came this month. And there's a few different project ideas using it to kind of give you an idea of how the yarn knits up. Obviously you can use the patterns too, but just there is this hat. Uh, it's hard to see. And then also you can see if there's a blanket here as well in the background. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with this yet either, but it's always so fun to see it kind of, it really does look bird related to me. I don't know, that's what, what I don't know what bird necessarily, but with the, those pops of yellow and then that dark beigey brown color, we will see what this grows up to be. Okay, now the last thing I was going to share with you, and I did mention this a couple months ago. I was doing some sewing and I picked up some fabric and I wanted to purchase some sewing patterns. However, found them so expensive at my local store and there was a sale going on on the Butterick McCall's website. 
and they were so cheap. Lots of these, like I, when I got my little invoice, were like originally 16 to 17 dollars is what it said on there and lots of them were on for like a dollar dollar fifty things like that so it was worthwhile to purchase and have it shipped rather than buying it here or um, even waiting for a sale here however it has been like over three months of waiting and i was starting to wonder if they were ever going to come but they did so this is kind of a little pattern haul that i picked up i thought i'd just go through them quickly here um, some of these I do have fabric for, some of them I don't. Some like this little girl's dress, I was hoping to make an Easter dress out of, but realistically I don't have the fabric. It just came in like two days ago and I'm not going to get it there. Just looking at what's going to be going on in my life in the next month. I don't see that happening. However, I will still make a dress or something out of this coming up. So I've got this one here, girl's dress, little shirt dress. Can see I was trying to go just pretty casual um, but useful because I really like wearing dresses in the summer. I thought I wanted to make some that are a little more nursing friendly and again something I know I'll get a lot of wear out of. Jersey dress and some of these I've seen some really nice um, PDF patterns for but when it comes to women's size clothing that is so many pieces of paper that need to be taped together that I just can't quite handle it. <laughs> this is the little calf town one and I picked up some fabric for this. So I think this is gonna be the first one that I sew when I get the chance. Um, not sure when that's gonna be, but I'm hoping that it happens before summer <laughs> because it seems like the sort of thing I will get to wear quite a lot. All right, everybody, that is all I have. Thank you so much for sticking with me this week. I might try to do these more regularly if I have this much content. However, I'm also expecting that to drop quite a lot. So we'll see what happens here. Thank you so much for um, watching. Thank you for the support and for checking out my other videos. If you are interested, I do have quite a lot of like tutorials, things like that, which are just really fun to make. Um, but I also really like sitting down and kind of keeping you updated on what I've been working on. So otherwise, I guess I will see you in the next video. Bye.